Hey, I'm Jeff and welcome back to another video. We have all experienced overwatering or at least the effects of overwatering a houseplant. So I'm gonna show you the best ways to get a houseplant to dry out and ways to prevent it from happening in the future. So let's get started. Overwatering is essentially when the soil stays wet for too long, not allowing any oxygen or airflow to the roots. It basically drowns them, uh, suffocates them, and that's how you end up leading to root rot. So I'm gonna talk a little bit more about overwatering later in the video, but let's get this plant dried out. This is a single that I recently watered and you can see the soil is still just soaking wet. There's a little bit of water in the bottom of the saucer there as well. So I'm worried that this is going to lead to root rot. So I got to get this dried out really fast. So the first thing that I suggest is placing a fan nearby. Placing the fan pointing at the soil will help with the evaporation process. As the air travels over the soil, it takes away water molecules or water droplets, allowing it to dry out much faster than it would be if it was left to dry out on its own. I would leave this running for maybe 24 hours or at least until you start to see the top of the soil start drying out. Other methods that I've seen out there are people suggesting using a hair dryer, but honestly, I don't have time to uh, stand here and just hold a, a hair dryer over the soil. Just place a fan and just let it dry out. And like I said, just check on it in a day or so. I use this oscillating fan downstairs here in the basement for all of my host plants. Air circulation or airflow is key along with uh, obviously light, watering, all that kind of stuff. So I do run this for 24 hours a day, just providing air circulation throughout the basement here. My next suggestion is placing your plant in a lower humidity area. You can see I run humidifiers down here in my basement. I do have one down there as well. The humidity is 43%. So that's generally what I like to keep it at around uh, in the basement here for all these tropical plants is around that 45%. Now I know upstairs is much lower. It's probably around the 30%. So if you have a plant in lower humidity, that will help with the evaporation process as well. It'll draw out that moisture in the soil and into the atmosphere, um, just drying it out. If you have it in a high humid area, it will not have the ability to evaporate fast enough just because obviously the humidity is higher. So even if you just have to move it temporarily, that will help with the drying out process. So the next thing you can do is aerate your soil. If you have a very dense soil, you can take a pencil or a bamboo skewer and just poke holes in the soil. This just allows airflow down to the roots. So I'm gonna poke some holes to the very bottom. This will hopefully help dry out the soil much quicker as there is um, little air pockets which the roots can now breathe. Hopefully you can see it okay, but I'm gonna put the uh, skewer at the very side of the pot, just showing you how it creates that air pocket. You can see the channel that goes right down to the bottom of the pot here. So this allows uh, airflow for evaporation as well as uh, oxygen to the roots. So I'm just gonna do that kind of around the edge of the pot here as well, just providing those little air pockets all the way around the plant. So you can do all those methods at the same time. Put it in a lower humid area, place a fan on it and aerate the soil. If it's still not drying out fast enough or you're seeing signs of root rot, like yellowing leaves, the plant is just not thriving anymore, you might actually have to take it out of the pot. I don't know if this one will um, stay intact. Uh, it might actually. So just squeeze the edge of the pot, go around with uh, a knife or a spoon and then take it out of the pot. For the most part, it's staying intact. Whoops, I got some soil dropping. But you can just let that sit outside of the pot for however long it takes to dry out. If you're seeing evidence of root rot, so those brown mushy roots, if the soil stinks, um, just cut off those brown mushy parts to the point where there are nice healthy white roots. Uh, let it dry out, place it back in its pot. Now I'm gonna talk about some things to prevent overwatering. The term overwatered is confusing because I can give this entire can of water to this small pot and it's not going to be overwatered. The issue you run into is when the soil doesn't dry out fast enough. Each plant has different soil requirements. So just do a little bit of research on the type of soil and care each plant requires. This philodendron prefers a really well draining soil. So you can see I have a lot of orchid bark in there. It's just a nice airy mixture. Now, if you have a plant like a calathea, they like soil that holds on or retains moisture for longer. So I'm going to show you, I'm gonna give this entire can of water to this plant and it's not going to be overwatered. It's gonna drain through 
you want to make sure that you thoroughly saturate your plants when you do water them. So water them thoroughly, but you shouldn't be able to overwater them when they are in the correct soil. I'm just going to keep soaking it. I know this is a waste of water, but I'm just trying to show you that I'm not overwatering my plant when it's in the right soil. Now this is a thoroughly watered plant, but it is not an overwater plant because it is in that nice chunky aeroid mixture. Okay, I'm just going to finish it off. I've come this far just for the sake of the video. You can see how fast that just drains through, even though I've given it the entire can of water. It just keeps draining out the bottom. So this is what you want to see when you water a house plant. Okay, so it's still draining out and this can is empty. Now whether you use a plastic nursery pot or terracotta, just make sure it has a drain hole at the bottom. Just if you give it too much water, it allows the excess water to drain out the bottom, not uh, leaving that plant just sitting in that wet, soggy soil, which again, you're going to drown out the plant and you're gonna eventually get root rot. If you don't like the look of these plastic pots, then you can use a decorative insert. But again, this one has drain holes on the bottom, so if you do happen to give it too much water, you can empty out the, uh, the catch pot and uh, yeah, that just prevents overwatering. After you water a house plant that is in a saucer, just be sure to empty out any excess water. It's the same concept. You don't want this plant sitting in that standing water. It's going to drown out the roots and it's going to lead to that suffocation and root rot. So just empty these out and then place the plant back in the dry saucer. One of the worst things you can do is water on a schedule. So don't water every Monday just because that's the day that you give your plants water. Let the plant tell you when it needs to be watered. So obviously determined by the soil. Certain plants that you can tell by the leaves, like with succulents, they are usually, or they should be fairly plump and firm. If the soil is dry and you're slightly able to bend a succulent leaf, then it needs to be watered. Some plants like syngoniums, they might get a little bit droopy, but don't let them completely flop over. Same with peace lilies. They, they will tell you by the leaves, they might get a little bit droopy, give them some water and they'll perk back up. If you have a tough time determining when to know if your houseplant needs water, get a moisture meter. You can also use clear pots just to see the soil moisture levels in the pot. There's many different things out there and again each plant requires different care so just do your research on that certain plant. The amount of sunlight that a plant gets also determines the amount of water that will be absorbed by the root system. So if a plant is in higher light or a brighter con uh, lighting condition it's going to use more water than if a plant was in lower light. So just there's so many determining factors about watering. Just pay attention to the plant, do some research, and then just set yourself up for the best success um, using like moisture meters and that sort of thing to help you uh, determine when your plant needs to be watered. So I think that's gonna be pretty much it for this video. If you have any comments or questions, please leave it down below in the comment section. Thanks again for watching my videos. I appreciate it. Take care everyone, bye.